Hi, this is Simon and welcome to Lot 76 Cars and the BMC and Leyland Show at the British Motor Museum on a very hot summer's day. So this is the six cylinder Triumph GT6, obviously Spitfire related as you can see. And just look at the styling on these, the Michelotti styling on the 2000 Saloon also carried across to the Michelotti styled Triumph Stag next to it and further on the original incarnation of the uh, Triumph 2000 uh, pre Michelotti styling. Next along we've got a Spitfire and we've got a relatively seldom seen Triumph 2000 estate. Look at the glass area on that, that's incredible isn't it? And it's got the sort of period type Robasto roof. One of the first 16 valve uh, engines actually was innovative in that it was developed by Triumph. These were quick cars, certainly I think something like 160 miles an hour top speed or maybe more I seem to remember in the day and, and certainly a, a potentially a world beating car. So a nice emerald green TR6, a beautiful TR7, well it's a TR8 in fact, it's got the three and a half litre Rover engine. I think they were only officially sold in the States, but obviously a few have been converted or found their way across. Lovely Michelotti design Triumph Stag. And next to that, another beautiful yellow TR7 from around about 1980. That must be towards the end of production. And then a Triumph TR4. Here's a, I think, magenta. I think that's the colour, Triumph TR6. Uh, just a pretty standard, but a, a, a GHP, so it might be a factory car. It looks like a locally registered uh, Triumph Dolomite. Of course, uh, a Herald, Mark II Herald. A Stag. I do like these Triumph Herald Estates. They're, they're, they're really good looking cars, aren't they? Um, and quite a number of Triumph 2000, so I won't aim to go through all of those in detail because there are quite a few of those, so bear with us. Um, if we get towards the end here, what we'll see is potentially a, um, a few of the vehicles that stand out, uh, Daimler's, the Daimler section here, but the ones I want to talk to you about are these Daimler SP250s. Now the SP250, in fact, it was incorrectly called the Dart. It was actually launched as the Dart at the, I think the New York Motor Show, but threatened by legal action by Dodge. In actual fact, uh, they dropped the name and it became the Daimler SP250. It is, in actual fact, the last car that Daimler made before the merger with Jaguar, in fact. And here's one with a special, specially styled front end. I'm not sure about that one, whether that uh, was in period or later. So plenty to see here today. Countless TR7s and TR8s. Uh, this is an early TR8, so it says here from the original uh, batch of 150. So that's quite a special car, isn't it? Dolomite, but non-sprint. Maybe it's an SE with those wheels, I suspect. Again, can't possibly cover all the TR7s, but I, I do like this um, standard two litre car, the green one. That's a lovely looking car, isn't it? So now we get to see a few of the Maestros here. Seldom seen these days, but in Britain's top sellers in the day. Huge glass area competing with Golf and Escort and Contemporary Astra. Launched, I think, in the early 80s spawned also the spin-off and this is the uh, Montego, uh, MG Montego, these are becoming pretty rare and rarer still is this MG Maestro Turbo. I think these were Tickford engineered, I think they were pretty quick cars in the day. This looks like the MG Montego Van Den Pla. that's a really nice car, is that Moonraker blue? I'm not quite sure. A different shade of blue is this uh, Montego Countryman Estate and next to it well you, you, you see one and then you see another one uh, an MG Maestro uh, I think it might be a turbo not quite sure on that one I 
can't recall seeing as many Montegos except back in the day. Maestros, and this is the Advantage Special Edition with those white wheels. There can't be so many of those left. Check how many are left and, and see how many there are. And another MG Maestro, this time in silver. And an MG Montego Estate. I do like these pre-facelift um, Rover 800 series cars, uh, loosely based on the Honda Legend. This one, I think it's Nightfire Red. It's a beautiful looking car, isn't it? I'm not sure about the spec, I'll check that. In fact, it's an 820 Turbo, which must make it relatively rare, I guess. And just leaving the show is this early Spitfire. Sounds sweet, doesn't it? And these are the so-called Bubble Rovers, Rover 200 series. This was streetwise, probably not necessarily so significant in the day, but really a precursor to the crossover type vehicles that are now much more well accepted. Another Bubble 200, maybe one of the most famous Bubble 200s of them all, is Project Nigel. So the Project Nigel YouTube channel, Paul runs that. And this is his multicolour Harlequin style Rover 200. We'll take a close look if we get the chance. Now these are the so-called last big Austin saloon, the 3000s. This one's converted to uh, an ambulance conversion. That's unusual, isn't it? These are big cars. I mean, it's seldom to see one of these full stop, but to see all of these together is fantastic. If you look at that body, you can see echoes of Land Crab and also the relationship uh, with Maxi. And these are in superb order. A G, that would be what, a 68, 69? The black one looks very, uh, very much like a car that an ambassador would have really good looking cars aren't they and you can see that the italian designed fits of the period obviously there's some influence there just looking at those but superb cars totally recognizable the rover p6s these are the 3500s the s i believe being the manual um very distinctive looking vehicles these are the facelift cars uh here's an earlier car pre-facelift it's a 2000 and I think I may well have seen that car before at a recent show. It's a, a B, I think that's a 64. And here's a 3500S. So this one I think was the manual car, if I'm not mistaken. Now this one is rare, it's an estate version. Not so many of these were converted in the day. I think the conversion process was quite complex due to the location of the petrol tank uh, behind the rear seats. Um, this is one of the ones that survived and will uh, try and take a quick look from the back of that one as well so there's quite a bit of space in there although it's relatively shallow it does make it much more usable look how the tailgate cuts into the roof line at the rear to give you better access and this is one of my favorite cars it's a rover p6b b standing for buick the small block v8 engine that rover bought uh, from buick in the states that was discarded by them no longer wanted but they used for a number of years I think this was the David Batch styled Rover SD1. This is a later car, Vitesse. What's really caught my eye amongst these cars is this um, relatively rare special edition V8S from the first series of cars before the facelift. These are relatively rare cars. I love those gold wheels, that sort of lime green metallic exterior. And no less attractive is this original SD1 in the beige and I think that's a later Vitesse. There's some lovely looking cars here. Again, one that's caught my eye is probably this one here, which is this avocado. Matched bathroom suites of the period. I These are the facelifted Rover 800 series where the grille was added onto the front. And here's an earlier car. This would probably be an 89. That's the red one. I think the original design for the Rover 800 looks particularly sharp and really works well and in fact, to be honest with you, is, is far better looking than the donor car which was the Honda Legend I believe of the period. This car that's getting a lot of attention here is one of the 800 coupes, um, relatively small production run of these and these are starting to become rare and starting to become appreciated now as well. What a good looking car they are. Difficult to see the bonnets up on this one, but uh, it's quite an unusual sort of dark mauvey uh, maroon. Nicknamed the Tomcat, uh, these Rover 
a 200 coupes uh, really pretty cars and in turbo format extremely fast I think this colour here is called Amethyst and a number of Rover cars of the period, MGS certainly had that same colour. It's an attractive looking car isn't it? So we wouldn't be seeing the full picture if we didn't see some minis, this lovely gold mini here, I think later with the sport kit on, I know a number of cars went to Japan and came back with things like air conditioning and auto, um, absolutely lovely looking cars these aren't they? And gold and green seems to be the order of the day. I myself had a, a later Rover Cooper. And that was green with a white roof. Well, that's an unusual colour combination, isn't it? And we'll finish off with a couple of racing green ones. But I've not seen so many with silver roofs. So based on the Rover 200 VI was this BRM special edition with a limited, a limited slip diff rather and several in period features, a lovely quilted leather interior built in relatively small numbers. To be honest, relatively slow selling at the time because of the pricing which was dropped um, which helped to increase the sales pace. Lovely to see some of these here. I believe as many as maybe 32 or so cars have been seen. Uh, at events in the past so there's certainly a few left out there and in fact ironically they're more common that's the right word to use than the base car the VI Rover. So we've got pretty much every flavour of land crab here we've got the Morris we've got the Austin and we've got this magenta coloured Wolseley another Morris And that's a nice looking car with those sort of uh, black uh, and silver period style alloys. And a more familiar, I think that's called Sand Glow. Correct me if I'm wrong. A couple of lovely midgets there as well. And of course, where would we be without a Maxi? And that white one is a glorious condition. These utilise the doors from the Land Crab. So to some extent, the centre part of the car was a little bit outsized but it did give it incredible properties in terms of roominess, especially with the hatchback and one of the first cars to feature a five-speed gearbox. And a Harris Mann designed Princess. That's a lovely colour, that one, isn't it? Now, I'm not sure if this was the last time the Riley badge was used, but this is the Riley badge version of the ADO 16, Advanced Drawing Office 16 project that spawned a number of uh, badge engineered products for BMC at the time. Lovely MG Magnet, and next to it, a, I think, let's have a look, it's a Riley Elf, mini-based Riley Elf, that's lovely, isn't it? Like the two-tone cream over green, and a green interior, an overload of green there, guys. So this was the first cooperation of Honda and then uh, British Leyland. It's a Triumph Acclaim in that lovely beige colour. That's a lovely car, isn't it? A real milestone car for um, British Leyland. I think Michael Edwards was involved in the negotiation with Honda to do that. Fantastic Austin pedal car on the back of an Austin pickup. That's a lovely looking vehicle. I love the Austin service right here on the side. Whole range of Austins here. I think it's the County's Club. So uh, forgive me for not going through each one of these in detail. An ADO 16 Austin GT leaving the show. A lovely green Austin A40 Sports. That's a pretty looking car, isn't it? This one, I'm not quite sure about this one, whether this was a period one or one that's been made into a low rider now. But um, it's certainly an attractive looking car, isn't it? A few more flavours of ADO 16. Riley's, I think that's the Austin, I guess. So standard motor club being well represented here. Standard eight, standard tens, vans, about every flavour as we walk down the row here. And the Vanguard, unusual looking vehicle. A Leyland 15 van. Another standard 8 or 10, I'm not quite close enough, I think that's probably a standard 10. I know one of them didn't have an opening boot. 
and a Triumph Atlas. That must be pretty unusual. Triumph Atlas camper van, must not it? What a fantastic selection of Mini Coopers here. Some race prepared, tartan red with a white roof, cream roof, uh, cream over green. That's a beautiful car. Oh, these are in stunning condition. That's a 997cc one, the uh, green car. I think almost every variation is represented here in these cars. This is a race prepared 1275 GT and a lovely Corgi Classics Eddie Stobart branded uh, rally car. Of course we've got uh, older Cooper S's like this one and later cars like this one as well. That's a very, very nice early 82-83 MG Metro. That's in superb order, isn't it? Oh, this is nice, this Lime Austin Allegro. Uh, it's a P, so what, 74-75, and I think fitted with the Quartic steering wheel. And um, we've got an early Quartic steering wheel Austin Allegro belonging to the Alex's Assets channel. Superb. So the first of a few Jarrett, uh, Jarrett Jupiter over there. I can see two of them the manufacturer who built cars in Bradford and unfortunately met a demise I think sometime in the 60s due to their inability to build car bodies. So a Marina camper van next door to a later I think a series 2 Marina this uh, orange one has a lovely looking car and I think next to it we've got a Marina TC which was the, the one with all the power, I think, with the MGB engine, wasn't it? Some iconic looking cars here. Uh, really, I love the colours, that the variation that we used to have available to us in those days. This beautiful green um, marina, this special Ellie Coupe, which is pretty. And then on to the Ital facelift by the Ital Design House and the lovely lime coloured TC. Those colours really pop, don't they? What a great turnout of marinas here. Absolutely lovely looking cars. Fantastic. And this is unusual, lovely British Leyland branded marina pickup. You're not gonna to see too many of those. And that looks like a very early car next to it. We've got obviously a later car here, but this early one, this base car is a J. Now the car was only launched in 71, celebrated its 50th model anniversary. We then got a later Ital, and more importantly, we've got a Royal Mail branded van, but not a Marina van, an Ital van. That's interesting. And one of the ADO 16 MG badge cars leaving. And some lovely MGAs, uh, the MGB registers here with some MGBs with Rally Heritage, including this one just hiding behind the uh, banner. This looks like an early car, maybe a 64 on the steel wheels. I do like those steel wheels and that's a lovely blue colour. And this took part on the Daily Express London to Sydney Marathon and survived. And a few other competition cars here. Austin Cambridge. And I think this is the Princess. I'm not sure if this is the R. I don't think it is. Not sure. But uh, Vanderbilt Princess, again, for Farina related vehicles. This is quite an unusual colour scheme. Austin Cambridge, I think, again. So an Allegro van den Plath, this one is a lovely colour. I think it's very similar, if not the car that uh, Classics World are restoring, certainly a similar one to that one. Next to it, a Maxi HL, a later one, what, 78, 79 car. And just behind the picnic table, a Princess and a Woolsey Land Crab. And, uh, and pretty unusual, there is a Sherpa camper van. I love that blue Sherpa camper van. That's a fantastic colour, isn't it? And that's what, 74, 75 on a P plate, I think. And the first of a lovely collection of mini metros, some more basic, I think it's probably HLS, a 1300 MG, and then this next to it will be the GTA version. Not so seen, not seen so much in actual fact. 
a mini and then uh, in the background you can just about see a mini sprite there as well so fantastic uh, turnout by the Triumph TR register TR2 or 3 I'm, I'm guessing on that one definitely TR6 and that lovely one in uh, the magenta colour great turnout by the guys here so launched in 1948 and nicknamed Project Mosquito the vehicle that would eventually uh, be um, become the Morris Minor designed by Izigonis there's plenty of those here uh, early cars like this one with the split screen which is fantastic to see uh, this here today it's a very early car isn't it later cars here as well and this pale blue four door and next to it is snuck in is a, a lovely Bristol 410 I think just walking a little bit further on we can see quite a few Morris Miners in fact as well as these Morris Miners here and there's no shortage of them let's take a look at this one over here because this is unusual this one doesn't know if it's coming or going it's got a trailer which is the front of another Morris Miner wow what a car so these 99 cars represent probably the last major launch that Rover did under BMW ownership lovely cars and Rover 75 is probably much maligned these are earlier cars if we walk along here we can see what's so called one of the project drive cars next to one of the earlier cars as well and you can see how the headlamps differ I think this was the Peter Stevens redesign um, if we walk on a little bit further and this is a vehicle that's really becoming interesting to collectors now it's the um, MG rebodied uh, 45 so it's the MG um, uh, ZS I've got that one right that's a lovely looking car isn't it and here's a Rover 75 with a difference it's a later car but in actual fact it's a long wheelbase car and I'm not sure if these were the series built by McNeely or they were built in-house by uh, Rover then but you can see where the additional wheelbase is and the extended rear doors there so Range Rover is also represented here from the early two-door cars and that's an early that's a H so that will probably be a 70 uh, we've got a later car I think that's a four-door one we're into the four doors now and right towards the end of the production I think probably with the LSEs then moving over we've got the P38 Range Rover which collectors are starting to get interested in now a 322 and then the last generation before the current one which is the L405 and then of course from the museum itself this um, six-wheel Carmichael fire engine Range Rover and a stunning stunning early mini so thanks to joining me uh, Simon on lot 76 cars at the BMC and Leyland show at the British Motor Museum today we've seen some fantastic cars you'll hear in the background some of them are now leaving it's been a really hot day fantastic turnout so please like share and subscribe and I look forward to joining you on the next one thanks for watching